this is the first Casio we're looking at on GMT-5. Now, we don't normally look at quartz watches, much less these big guys like the gravity defier we're about to explore, but after reviewing the Tissot T-Touch Expert Solar, I figured it was only fair to examine the mother of all survival watch brands, Casio G-Shock. Introduced last year at Baselworld, the Gravity Defier was well received by G-Shock fans due to its tough and serious aesthetics and, of course, its digital compass. Thing is, I haven't been interested in digital watches since I was a kid. Not to say I don't appreciate them, but I chose the Analog Gravity Defier as our first G-Shock because I wanted to review something that felt more grown up. I wanted something premium, really top of the line, to see how it would fare with someone like me who collects mainly mechanical pieces. Getting over the case size is the first obstacle to even considering this watch as a wearable option. It's big, and there's no getting around it. If you've been wearing Submariners and Speedmasters, then you're likely going to feel self-conscious wearing most G-Shocks, but the Gravity Defier is even worse. The watch measures 53.5mm by 48mm by 17.5mm. However, it wears much, much better than its specs. Best of all, the case is lugless, so your 48mm lug-to-lug distance is no different from many other large and popular wristwatches like the Hamilton Khaki Officer and another lugless favorite, the Seiko Prospect's Tunican. As I always say, it's really the lug-to-lug -lug distance that determines if a watch is too big for the wrist, and 48mm isn't that bad for a modern wristwatch. When it comes to actually protecting the movement inside, Casio employs a triple G resist shock resistance technology that enables the gravity defier to withstand impact, vibration, and g-forces that regular civilians cannot comprehend. Add to that 200 meters water resistance and you have a watch that's way beyond tough. And one of my favorite aspects of this watch is its anti-reflective sapphire crystal. It's an absolute must for those used to Swiss mechanical watches and way better than plastic or, or any other kind of mineral crystal which will scratch easily. Few brands and models do an excellent job of straddling the fence between pure utilitarian instrument and luxury watch, and never did I count Casio to be one of them. However, the dial on the Gravity Defier is artfully done. Its depth and attention to detail is characteristic of a much more expensive and that type of grown-up piece that I was talking about. When a watch has so many features like this particular model, each one is an opportunity to erode legibility, and that's just not the case here. Casio used depth to make the local timekeeping front and center and position everything else in the background where it can hide away until it's needed. From the crystal to the dial is quite a lot of distance. Remember, the watch is 17.5 millimeters thick, and a lot of the dial's elements are raised, so it's like you're viewing the dial with 3D glasses on. But what's really cool is the hands on the aviation-inspired subdials at 12 and 6 o'clock, how they appear to float above the dial and below the timekeeping hands. At first glance, the running seconds hand doesn't appear to be anything special, but it's made of carbon fiber, a light, optimal material for all the purposes the second hand serves, which we'll cover shortly. A lot of G-Shocks have a backlight, but this one doesn't. Seems like it would be a useful feature, but Casio's Neobrite isn't that bad. You'll notice that tough movement is written on the dial. But what does this mean? The term refers to the presence of four distinct innovations, and any Casio with these features will have tough movement inscribed on the dial. The first is Casio's Wave Scepter radio technology, which means the watch can sync with up to six atomic clock signals throughout the world, so its timekeeping accuracy is superior. The second is solar power. You never need to change a battery, and a full charge will last you six months in the dark. Then there's automatic pointer calibration, which is really interesting. So when watches experience crazy impact forces, the hands can become misaligned, and the movement features a sensor that can tell if they're not aligned. And if they're not aligned, the watch hands will all reset the 12 and then move to their appropriate positions. And finally, the watch is constructed using a hybrid design of resin and metal. This is one of the reasons the watch is physically so tough and can withstand tremendous impact forces. Casio's smart access technology makes it easy to set the time and to switch modes to use all the features. And there are a lot of features. Setting the time is easy. Unscrew and pull out the crown. The seconds hand will point to the current time zone. Just twist the crown to select the time zone that you want, and the hands will automatically adjust. Now on to the highlight of the release, the innovative digital compass. Press the compass button at 2 o'clock and the seconds hand stops ticking to guide the way. Press mode to return to timekeeping. Press mode again to access world time. In timekeeping mode, the hand at 6 o'clock points to the day of the week, but watch it rotate and point to world time, the active mode. Right now I have it set to UTC, but you would just pull out the crown and set the watch just like in regular timekeeping mode. 
Enter chronograph mode by pressing mode again. Fans of the Lamani F5100 will appreciate the implementation of this chronograph as it measures multiple units of elapsed time on one dial. It uses the seconds hand to count one-tenth of a second, the minutes hand registers the seconds, and the hour hand counts the minutes. On the 24-hour subdial at 12 o'clock is where it counts the hours. You can press the flyback or the reset pusher on the right side to instantly reset the chronograph and restart it without having to stop it. Press mode again to enter the countdown timer mode. It never gets old watching the seconds hand move backward. Press mode one last time to enter alarm mode where you can set the alarm time and enable or disable the alarm. And finally, one last press gets you back to timekeeping. This particular model comes on a resin strap with a double pin buckle and a single floating steel keeper that holds the strap firmly. I was worried the keeper would slide all over the place, but it doesn't budge. Despite its size, the gravity defier is easy to wear. That's what's most surprising about it. It's light, and on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist, the case doesn't hang over either edge of it. But for the first week I wore the gravity defier, I was always scanning wrists around me to make sure I didn't have the biggest watch in the room. By the second week, I was over it and I allowed myself to enjoy the watch for what it is. Drawn to this Casio, I often took off a much more expensive watch to wear it. Like the right dive watch can make you feel adventurous, the gravity defier makes you feel prepared. You're lost? Well, you have a compass. You accidentally knock your watch into a thick marble countertop? Not a big deal. You intentionally knock your watch into that same countertop? Well, you can do it again. With its solar power and wave scepter technology, it's a hands-off watch, but all of its other features make it a super useful, and a watch like this you know, really deserves to be more than a beater, although it certainly can take the hurt. This particular Casio retails for $650, although it can often be had for about 100 bucks less. That's still a lot of money for a quartz, and even 500 bucks can buy you a solid Japanese automatic from Seiko or Orient that can also stand up to a good beating and last a lifetime. There's no question about that. However, if you're going to buy a quartz watch, I tend to think you should seek something more innovative than your typical battery-powered three-hander or chronograph. I wrote before about needing a complications watch in your collection. While I was referring to a mechanical watch, the gravity defier would certainly be a worthy electronic counterpart.